Season 4, Episode 5, Gather Thy Members. Okay, Count Fangula, Rochester, who has the paperwork? I have it. Town Form Z Ult Delta Addendum. Caretaker appointment of Sergeant at Arms. Yes, I can leave town or be otherwise indisposed for 48 hours with my Sergeant at Arms, that's you, Roddy, at the helm in case of emergency. At which point, if I get thrown in eyeball jail for punching the creep who has our bead, then the caretaker title passes to you. No one wants to live under my regime. My vision for the town is a torturous nightmare of melancholic self-reflection. Well, good thing I'm not going to be gone more than 48 hours. I'm just going to pop over to the ne'er-dwell through the treethernet, help the gang confront a rogue agent of the Elsewhere Council, get the bead, pop the bead back on the Abacus of Fate, and zoop on back home. Bada-bing, bada-boom. Come over here, Nita. I need to fit you for the nano circuit. Okay, I'm a 14 in most brands, unless they're shaped weird, and then I'm- Nah, it's just a cuff. You just slide it on, see? Now let's get you shrunk. Whoa! Albert never told me how cool it was to go inside the ether network. Okay, Minerva said, walk to the blinking ball and touch it. Boop. Welcome, tiny citizen, to the Treethernet, a joint venture between Mr. Thorne's Trelophone Station and Etherweb Mummy Ghost Donald Von Snap. Rawr! Hey, Mr. Thorne, Don, good to see y'all. Thanks for making an Etherweb network out of roots and spores and stuff. To begin the travel tutorial, press the blinking ball. Okie dokie. Book. Pretty in here. I have created a simple graphical forest interface so that you can navigate through the Roots network to meet your team in the near dwell. Well, you did awesome. To travel, follow the path of glowing tree stumps. Hold down your left brain stick to sneak. Hold down your right brain stick to run. Please don't make me run. Okay, a little stream to jump over. Got it? Aw, I made a little boing sound when I jumped. Well, that's just adorable. <laughs> okay, focus. Follow the glowing stumps. There's the next one. As you progress through the forest, you will need to listen for the song of your guide. Song of my guide, gotcha. Uh, okay. Hey, lily, lolly, lolly, lee, daddy, do. Um... Is that Pumpkin? He insisted I let him audition to be the voice actor for the Treethonet travel game. Well, sounds like he nailed it. Okay, going toward his voice. This way. Now follow my lovely voice to meet your next guide. All right. Where's my next guide? Oh, Don, hi. Long time no see. How's life in the old ether network? Aw, you miss Fibula? Well, that's sweet and weird. I know, I know. Chip told me you said she didn't mean to zap you. She still zapped two people. That's not great. Well, I don't even have time to respond to all of that. Oh, wait, are we there? Are we at the cabin? See you guys, thanks. What's up, Fibula's Cabin? Oh, hey, you know her. Nice. Hey, Nina, the telephone. Hello, Madam Caretaker. Technically, this is not Fibula's Cabin anymore. It reverts to its official name, Custody Cabin C. Cabin C? You can't be serious. Chip, Albert, Cabin C. It's fate, Bonita. I think we're going to do some awesome things here today. Y'all in. Colonel Holler. 
People, Albert, where did they come from? The pond, probably. Plus, we got spiders, which we got at home, but they're bigger here, and goblins and kobolds, and they keep coming. You know why? Because we're finally the most popular people in the whole ne'er dwell. Okay, but maybe it's because they heard us on the radio saying we need help and stuff. Oh, I know that, but they wouldn't have come if we didn't sound popular. That's true. Plus, I think word's starting to get around about my snack table. Okay, and I don't want to brag, but I saw some crab people admiring my pencil station. Clicky, jumbo, old school. I like it. Hey guys, isn't this great? The monsters keep pouring in, so now all we need is a plan that uses all their weird monster powers to save our souls, but I'm not too stressed about it. Thanks for asking! Yep, this will be your legacy, Nita. No pressure. Thanks, Chip. Relax. Look, I saved you one snack bar because we're friends. And I missed your big ol' hairdo. Oh, thank goodness. Nita, in my experience as caretaker, I often found it helpful in times of stress to state the facts of our predicament, no matter how strange or insurmountable they might seem. Okay, that's a good idea, Albert. Please finish chewing. Fact number one. Chip is a butthead. Okay, fact number two. That Agent Sty guy has our graduation bead. What else? We think he'll use Agent Twitch's ring to enter the Oculodome, where he'll extort the Elsewhere Council for more power using our bead from our abacus, which is very rude. Surely Agent Sty sees himself as a strong man who would conquer all the towns one by one. In which case, our souls are trapped here forever. No pressure, Nita. Fellas, ma'am, I just finished drafting a schematic of the Oculodome. It should prove useful for battle plans and escape routes. Nice work, Agent Twitch. Hey, what do you know about the Elsewhere Council? Can we really not just warn them and let them deal with Agent Sty so we can get our stupid bead back? Yeah, can't we just bang on the gates or give them a shout out on the radio or something? Not quite. You all forget that managing countless themed towns and the interstitial ne'er-do-well requires otherworldly levels of bureaucracy. It would take months to get a message to the council, let alone an audience. We'll have to be creative, folks. Can you tell us anything else about the Elsewhere Council? The Elsewhere Council is chaired by seven retinal magistrates. Ooh! Retinal Retinal magistrates. magistrates! The retinal magistrates preside from a high wall along the back of the Oculodome where they receive and focus the light of wisdom throughout the realm, subtly guiding the life script of every soul in every town throughout time. So they're the reason that me and Nito work at the boutique. Correct. Today they'll hear evidence at Fibula's trial. Tomorrow they choose top hats for President's Day town. Big job. Oh, looks like more near dwellers just arrived. Yes! Rock people! I knew they'd come! Okay, let's take five to settle in our guests. Then we're going to figure out how to get inside the Oculodome. So, rock people, I have a question for you, and I need you to be honest with me. Do I have a shot with Queen Chalcedonia? 
To the death, you say? I need more karate practice. Hey, something smells delicious. The fire people are grilling things outside. Hey, Julie, who's my sweet baby angel? Is it Julie? Is it Julie? I bet Julie had some good old apples on her big adventure. Wow, well, lady, you are beautiful. Um, thanks, cowgirl. Just like Fibula. Whoa there, cowboy. But your makeup's a little bit different. Yeah, not very subtle. Nita, I see you met Buddy and Susan. Oh, you mean the two dolls who are leaning on my leg and sucking their thumbs like I'm their new ne'er-dwell mommy? <coughs> well, as caretaker, I guess you are. Speaking of which, I think we got a full crew now. I see shadow people, fire people, rock people. Here comes Chip with Agent Twitch. Nita, we piled up our snack plates and we're ready for you to solve all our problems and go! Okay, so we need to reach the magistrates inside the Oculo Dome. How do we get inside? The gate will be heavily guarded by Cyclope security. But can't you just pull rank on these jokers and make them let us inside? Without my ring, I have no more authority than anyone here. Maybe we can be a tall man! Yeah, I'll climb on Buddy's shoulders and wear a big long coat. We'll be Mr. Mr. Tall, tall Man! man. Okay, option one is Mr. Tallman. Any other ideas? Does the gate have a weakness, Agent Twitch? <laughs> Maybe one thing. The same thing that brought everyone to the cabin. My snack table. Entertainment, Mr. Clearly. When the comms went out all over the ne'er-do-well, we became desperate for any kind of performance at all. Well, that explains all the interest in Pinecone-centric radio programs. But you're saying we could pose as live performers to get inside the Oculodome. Sounds like I'll be doing some close-up magic. I doubt that'll get us in front of the magistrates. Then the play's the thing. We'll need drama, romance, and a song. There once was a man with a magic bean. Hold that thought, Mr. Clearly. I have an idea. Well, you see, magistrate number two is an aspiring playwright of dubious merit. I take it these plays are not very good? Dreadful. For weeks he's been sharing copies of his latest work around the council chambers. And if we stage a production of this crappy play, he'll be so jazzed about it that he'll let us perform it in front of all of his friends on the council. I will be honored to direct this play. Okay, sure, but anyway, yes, I like this idea. We'll use near dwellers to play all the parts and make costumes and stuff because who cares? It doesn't have to be good. We just have to get inside the Oculo Dome. But wait, how do we get a copy of this disaster of a play? Someone has to steal it from the magistrate's home. Who, boy? It can't be me. I have to source costumes, lighting, talent. Also, Chip, you're not actually invisible if people can see your wig. We can, we can do, do it! it! Hmm. I suppose we could package up Buddy and Susan and mail them to the Magistrate's home. The post hasn't come through yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll need packages. packages! Do we feel good about that plan? Yeah, they can handle it, but only if they don't get distracted. We, we won't. won't! Okay, you two, let's make a package. What's this? A package for His Excellence, Magistrate Number Two. That's me! Oh, lands! But these are baby dolls. One cowboy, a cowgirl. Wherever did you come from? Oh, there now, cowgirl. No need for all that. I see. You stay here. I'll get the Wawa. Oh, my granddaughter will love you too. She needs something to help her get over this smashing face. Very annoying. The coast is clear, brother. Open it, papers. 
Fiat Mail is sleepy. What are we doing again? We have to find a story and steal it. But I'm hungry. I want a snack. Me too. He got so many cookies. We need some milk. You're going to spill it, buddy. You need an adult. I got it. Oops. Look, buddy, he got a kitty cat. Here, Kiki. Here, Kiki, Kiki. Remember, Uncle Chip said use kitten hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby dolls, where have you gone? Would you like to hear a story? I wrote it myself. We should probably do our jobs. Oh, let me think. The story is in the study. Look, brother, this ship is stuck in an old bottle. Get it out. Watch out for stapler shark. Hey, look, a story. Let's read it. No, we got to steal it, remember? Oh, yeah. But what about, let's rescue Fibula. No, no, no. Our new lady said she'll get in trouble, remember? We're supposed to come straight back with the story. Okay. Look, Squirrel, we got the story. What's he saying? He said, go inside the magic log. It'll take us right back to the cabin. Hey, I got an idea. Go to the cabin, buddy and Susan. Okay, okay Mr. Mr. Thorn. Thorn. The cabin. everyone, we're starting! Remember, ten minutes early is on time! On time is late! Fire people, let's use blob gels on the spotlight! Cobalts, less hand tracing on the backdrop, please! And where are my dress pants for the rock people? I'm concerned by how seriously Chip is taking this play. He's very serious about verisimilitude. Yes, that's why I'm doing cartwheels in scene five. Attention, everyone! I'd like to welcome you to the first rehearsal of our play this season, which is called The Retinal Magistrate's Odyssey, There and Back Again, As a Hero Does. Ooh, every time I hear the title, I'm embarrassed all over again. Odyssey is spelled S-E-E. -E. Oh, I saw. I want to thank everyone for answering the all call. Whatever part you got, doesn't matter if you're a tree stump, magistrate, or a cartwheeling harridan, you're all important to our production. We're gonna dazzle them in the Oculo Dome. Okay, but remember, we only have to get inside, Chip, so maybe just hit the high notes. We still have a lot of planning to do. We'll start at the beginning. The magistrate's origin story, where Papa John and Aunt B, that's Albert and Julie, discover that a spaceship has crash-landed on their farm. Papa John approaches the capsule, and he says, Whoa, Nelly, a spaceship crashed right on my potato farm. <gasps> That's true, Aunt B. It also reminds me of truth, justice, and the elsewhere way. If there's a baby inside, let's call it Magistrate. Okay, we're going to paint that microwave like a spaceship, but for now, just pretend it's got windows and a racing stripe. Time to open the spaceship. Chip, are we supposed to have two baby magistrates? Susan, get out of the space capsule. No, no we, we do, do it, it together. together. Fine. Albert, keep going. You're doing great. Chip, exactly how long is this Keep gonna... rolling, Albert. Okay, this is where the baby magistrate lifts the tractor up over his head, right, Chip? Yeah, buddy, Susan, are you sure you can lift that toy tractor? We got it! Okay, and then Albert, I mean, Papa John says... Wow, 
If he can lift a tractor, then this baby must be strong and wise, like a magistrate. That's great! Do it just like that during the performance. Hey, Chip, since this is all going so well, maybe it's time to talk about confronting Agent Sty, saving our souls, you know, all that good stuff. Ah, <sighs> okay, you're probably right. One more scene. Then during your meeting, I'll just pull people in as needed, okay? Fine. Okay, everybody, we're skipping to scene 12, in which the magistrate is coming to terms with how awesome he is. Rooftop, nighttime, guitar solo. Okay, Chip, I know it was hard to leave play rehearsal for a second. It's okay. We're running the scene where the Wicked Witch puts the Magistrate to sleep in a field of poppies. My stand-in is a log. Sure, but uh, we need you to help us fill out this character profile of Agent Sty. I've got to know who we're up against here. I've made some educated guesses about his intelligence and strength. That Constitution score looks wrong to me, too. Halbert, remember when he put us in jail? And hurt his hand locking the cell? I do. And consider the defection from Agent Squint, who was so disloyal to him that she came and told us his plans. This suggests that his charisma is sub-average as well. Okay, so on paper, there's nothing that would indicate that this guy would try some kind of major scheme like this. And yet, here we are. Sometimes even a hint of power is enough to corrupt a person who otherwise feels unremarkable. You said a mouthful, Albert. Remember the kids who couldn't handle being classroom monitor in elementary school? They wrote everybody's name on the board. Did you do that, Nita? No, I was a very just and wise classroom monitor, thank you. Well, thanks for running the scene, Roxanne. Did everyone remember their lines? Oh, but they didn't. They didn't? Maybe it's time for us to do a memory meditation inside our mind palaces. Albert, Nita, I've got to get back to the play. Well, that's all right. Yeah, I think Albert and I need to focus on planning out what we're going to do once we're inside the Oculodome and it's time to confront Agent Sty. Let's start a list of potential scenarios. All right, Nita, that's potential scenario 77. Let's take a scan of the board. Hey, Count Fangula, we've got another page of potential bead scenarios for you to transcribe and tag. I am on it like a bolt on Frankenstein's neck. Erasing this board. Let's resume scenario planning. Okay, scenario 78. Sty, enraged by our terrible play, stands up in the crowd to heckle us freeing Buddy and Susan to break character, at which point Susan will heckle him back. Freeing Buddy to sneak around behind him and extract the bead from his pocket while he is distracted. Scenario 78B. He's wearing the bead on a necklace, and Buddy has to grab the necklace, maybe throwing in a little choking action. Scenario 78C. He's carrying the bead in a little pouch. Nita! Nita! It's time to rehearse your other scene! Ugh! Hey, Agent Twitch, would you mind stepping in and helping Albert plan out scenarios for a moment? No problem. I need to take a break from wrangling our helpers. The mushroom people had a beef with the rock people over some nasty old mortar and pestle business. <laughs> that sounds right. Come on, Nita! Chip, remind me of why you have to be the one to play the adult hero version of the Magistrate. Because I already had the costume, Nita! And he has the most lines of anyone in the play. You know how fast I can learn lines. Now, hop, on stage. Uh. In character. I mean, uh, I'm dying, son. On your mark. You're on the bed we just built out of fig crates. Here, put on this old granny nightgown. Why do I have to play his mother? We are the same age. Nita, you're the only one with the nurturing spirit that this role requires. Uh, gonna kill you. That's it. Now give me your line. Ugh, I'm dying, son. Life is like a box of candy. I have a confession. Your father is the evil overlord. Darth Magistrate is my father. <gasps> no! You must use the force, Field. 
Okay, that seems a little off. Um, use the force field and you will win. Blah, I'm dead. All right, that's a wrap on act one. Let's break for lunch. Status report, play. Blocking choreography is at, I'd say, 85% with our rock, tree, frog, and mushroom people. We just tested the Shadow People fog machine for the Magistrate's big guitar solo, and it is perfecto. All right, and Agent Twitch, are all of our friends from the Nairdwell busy and happy? Yes, but I have an urgent diplomatic request from the leader of the frog people. He wishes to give a ceremonial friendship kiss to the leader of the Halloween people. Okay. Don't worry, Nita. He could turn into a prince. Could do. Thank you, Squirrel, for the weather update. We don't anticipate any wild storms or be shrouding fog in advance of our entrance to the Oculo Dome. All right, so I think we've done a very good job of being ready for what to do when we get to the Oculo Dome. And we've got our play rehearsed. It's weird, but it's rehearsed. So that leaves us just enough time for contingency plans. What do we do if getting the bead from Agent Stye doesn't seem straightforward? I've got Curdle Holler on video chat. Minerva, can you hear me? Yeah, Anita. Hey, everyone. So what are the next scenarios we need to plan for? Count Fangula and I took your 217 scenarios and fed them into an artificial intelligence. Hello! Hey, it's Bloopy! Yeah, Bloopy gave us an additional 63 scenarios to consider to accommodate likely outcomes. I'm sending you some more team members through the Etherweb. They're in the territorial right now. Hello! You already said that, Bloopy, but hello. Well, surely the giant ice cream cone avatar Bloopy is not going to be one of our team members. Or are they? What an outrageous thing to say, Albert. It is not Bloopy you must make room for in your scenario planning. Well, who is it, Count Fangula? Don't leave us hanging. Thank you! Abacus Bead Portal Challenge! Eat the Web Shrink Ray Challenge! Hey, Tower! Hey, Tower! Hey, Tower! Okay, so we've got the wizards from the Hype Tower. That's very in. Hang on, one more. Kevin C, please welcome the ruler of routers, the starch of splitters. It's Bobby Carnacle! Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Bobby Carnuckle's got an error report, and it's got Agent Stye's name all over it. <laughs> all right. Bobby Carnuckle, welcome to Cabin C. So before we head out, let's run through Plan B one more time. That's scenarios 218 and up. All of these scenarios involve some permutation of the retinal magistrate's disbelief of our tale, at which point Bobby Carnuckle will come in with his error report. Bobby Carnuckle's ready, I tell you. And if Bobby's error report doesn't sway the magistrates, then we have no choice but to enact one of scenarios 232 and up, which is where our wizards come in. Yes. If all else fails, Mystic Mike and the Hype Tower Wizards will open a portal. A magical portal. Straight to Kirtle Holler. And we will send the Abacus of Fate directly through to the Magistrate's Chambers. Wait a second. I was just getting into character and I missed this part. Why can't we just zoop the Abacus through now and take it to the Oculo Dome with us? It can play a candelabra or a townsperson. Too risky. Yes, Chip, our probability models have determined that the abacus would introduce an element of unpredictability. It could get stolen or confiscated before we even get to the magistrate's chambers. Or it could behave erratically when taken outside of its magical domain. Yeah, so that's why we try to get the bead first. And if that doesn't work, then we bring the abacus to the bead. Sheriff, are you on the call? 
Uh, yes, yes. I had to turn off my video because I went into WC for a little bit. You know, I, I mean, I, I ain't in there now. You know, it's not what I'm doing right now. Sheriff, do you have the abacus? Yep, yep, I got that. Uh, I do, I tell you. Uh, now, I've been sitting with it over here by old bat singer since uh, them ghosts is still wild. You know, say hey, Belfry. He don't want to. Terry, are you guarding the abacus? Yes, ma'am. Them old ghosts won't say boo to me. Thank you. And we've got the abacus coordinates for our wizards. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. That's our caravan signal. All right, y'all. Get your costumes on. It's time to travel to the dome. Why did the guard say ding dong? Agent Twitch, you've got all these beautiful spires and parapets, but do y'all not have bells in the Oculodome? It's a tradition to say ding dong. Of course we have bells. Now it's time to pipe down, ma'am. The Invisible Man and I have an audition. Ho, fair maiden of the guard gate. Would you like to be wowed by the finest theater troupe in all the ne'er dwell? Mm-mm, baby, I'm gonna need to see three copies of L Square Form J1 Triangle from everybody in this group, and that does not even guarantee entry into the dome. I have a backlog of unstamped J1 Triangles, and I have got to get up and walk around because my doctor says I am too sedentary, so excuse me. No, no, Agent. Uh, I'm sorry, your lanyard is obscuring your nameplate. Agent Gunk at your service, but baby, I am telling you, I have got to get up and walk around and put some more tea in my 40-ounce Big Elsewhere sipper. My doctor says I could have a medical emergency at any moment, and sluggish blood runs in my family. Well, walk with us, Agent Gunk, and we'll fill your mug from our green room samovar. Let me introduce you to the star of our wonderful play, which is me. Well, thank you, baby. That is delicious, but I told you I have a backlog. It cannot be expedited. You're going to have to get you a tent or some sleeping bags and just stay here for about 40 to 50 days while I process your J1 triangles. And that is even assuming y'all got them with your eyes dotted and stapled because everybody comes through this gate playing like I got the only stapler in the ne'er dwell, which I know I don't. I'm sorry to interrupt, Agent Gunk, but this is a special theater troupe and we require a J1 skip. Retinal Magistrate Number 2 has commissioned a performance of the play he wrote, and we are to stage it tonight in the Magistrate Chambers. What's this play now? The Retinal Magistrate's Odyssey. There and back again, as a hero does. Good night. That is a... And who, who are you playing? I play the Retinal Magistrate. Okay, and who is he? I play Goranir, the brother who is tempted by the magic ring. And who do they play? Mr. Tallman. And a baby. And they told us to come to the front gate and get a temporary magisterial gyre card. And that we could use the magisterial rotunda to rehearse. Well, that all sounds like something. I don't know. My sugar is just too low to be worried about y'all. And it sounds like you've got something real official. So I tell you what, I'm going to give y'all these visitor wristbands. Disperse them amongst yourselves. They sticking together. Hold on. And here's your gyre card. It is coded for the rotunda, okay? Come on through. It's time for my 27-minute break. Thank you, Agent Gunk. You can catch our performance in the Magisterial Gallery. If I get roses on opening night, I'll save them for you. Boy, you are a mess. Get out of here now. Come on through, y'all. <laughs> Mr. Tallman, you too. I was expecting, but this is amazing. Indeed, I'm quite taken with the Cyclopean architecture. Feels good to lay eyeball on the city again. 
These people got weird makeups. Okay, but we don't stare, buddy. We're, we're not staring, staring. we're, we're pointing. pointing. Bobby Carnuckle understands. It's an eyeful if you're not used to the big city. Wizard selfie at the Oculodome. <laughs> Okay, everybody, attention. Ooh, finger on lips. I like that, Bobby. Thank you. Anyway, I just want to say, I don't know if it's because we're in the big city or because I'm wearing two pounds of magistrate mother makeup, but I'm very moved and grateful that each one of you is here to help our little town and maybe fix a few other things in the process. Yep, there you go. Thank you to everyone here. We're almost there, folks. Just a little drama, a small confrontation, and we can set things right again. Uh, which way, Agent Twitch? Just follow the corneal concourse. Huh, this marketplace is something else. Look it, the new spell books are out. Get some footage for the channel. Can we get a t-shirt? No, we're going straight to the council. Can we get a styrofoam blizzard? No. Can we get a blink on battle cards? No. Can, Can we, we get, get nunchucks? Uh, well... Chip. No, we have to focus. Think about your lines and try to ignore those juicy, delicious truncheons of mystery meat that are captivating my very senses. Bobby Carnuckle could go for a meat pie. Now you all heard the caretaker. We can go shopping after we fix the abacus and save our town. I really hope we survive because I want to get my nails done in every color like that fancy woman in the booth over there. All done, madam. Beautiful work. She is beautiful. Ew, at the intertroop. Look, everyone, a play is to occur in the city. Ooh, a play. Did you hear? Observe the players. It's a great play. It really is. It's got loud parts, quiet parts, spaceships, old ladies, all the stuff you're going to want to see. I'm directing, and these guys made all the costumes. Okay, Chip, we're trying to blend in here. Whoa! Whoa! In the lands of theme! Who's that guy? Doomsayers. They set up shop when we lost contact with the towns. The evil eye turns upon us! Who will rise to save us in this, our desperate hour? Geez, we're working on it! Oop, oh, this must be the council entrance. You can tell because everybody's trying to finish up their beverages real quick. Halt, citizen! I see you, soldier. We're but a humble theater troupe, here to perform- Yes, yes. Magistrate number two told us all about it. Believe me. The trial should be wrapping up shortly. You can observe in the hallway, but say nothing until the court breaks for recess. Okay, everybody. Showtime. And then we see who is the fool at Lady Brownhair's wedding. <laughs> Fibula Von Snap, this court is not your television program. You are not playing to the gallery. You will direct your responses to the elsewhere council. Indeed, we're not floating ten feet off the ground here because we're unimportant. You will look us in the eye and answer the question. And may I remind you... A wonderful play is to occur when we break the recess. Okay, number two. I thought you asked about Squirrel. We have heard enough about Squirrel and Pointy Vandercap. We want to know why you took the souls of three neighbors, including your own husband, before attempting deletion of your entire town. Okay, first of all, Mummy Hubby was only accident. My Donald, he is so quiet around the corridor, and oopsie zoopsie, he is gone. It was a mistake. Yeah! Order! Order! The fact is, Fibula, you wrote a killer song. Thank you, baby. But don't be so dramatic. Fibula did not kill. I only borrowed their Halloween spirit and zooped him into computer. 
witnesses of your crime describe the chilling tintinabulation of bells, ethereal keys, and hair raising on the back of their necks, when seemingly out of nowhere... Oh, relax, babies. It's only ringtone. Turn off your cell phone. The chair recognizes magistrate number two. Isn't it true that a play is very good if it has a sword fight? Sure, baby. I don't know. Magistrate number three. Fibula, although we are skeptical, we received reports of good behavior from your parole officer. He says you have an interest in telecommunication. And with limited resources, use your radio program to foster community in the ne'er-dwell. Does this signal a change of heart? Have you learned anything to demonstrate compassion? Or character? It may affect our decision. Well, I learned that tree vine is not the same as coaxial cable. <laughs> no, but for serious. Fibula was wrong to play the cacophonies, and I am grateful to Kevin Custody. When I am alone for the first time with the stinky log and scurry hurry animal, I am missing the drama and the competition and the fashion. But I am also having peace. Go on. I still want to be recognized. I am an artist, after all. Of course. We all want to be seen. But also, I begin to think not all attention is good attention. Maybe it is time for a fibula rebrand. Intriguing. We have much to think about. Yes, yes, number two. I see the clock. We'll take a short recess to watch a play written by magistrate number two about his experiences, and we support his creativity. Fibula, do not go far. When the play is done, we will render judgment upon your soul. How's it going out there? Agent Stye isn't in the audience, is he? Okay, thanks. Man, Albert, can you believe we got into the Oculodome by staging an entire play? It was such a dumb idea that it actually worked. Sometimes silly things are brilliant in the right light. Lights up. It's time for the monologue at the school dance. I just want to say that I have learned a lot in my time as Magistrate, and as much as I would love to wear this crown, I don't deserve it. I'm going to break off pieces of this crown and give it to all of you. Oh, thank you, Roxanne. That's my cue. I killed it! I messed up my lines a little bit, but I don't think anyone noticed. And so then was a war for many, many years. The brave teddy bear people of the jungle planet fought valiantly against the hooded riders who represented the evil giant eyeball in the sky, Darth Magistrate. Man, this place stinks, but we're doing great. You're doing great, Chip. I really mean it. Your enthusiasm is really quite brilliant. Thanks, Nita. Do you think I need to reapply my stage rouge? I don't know. Your cheeks are pretty red. Whoop, your eyeball's crooked. And as the years passed, the Magistrate won the Hungry Games. And he did so well in them and fell in love that they made him come back and do them again. Which he did. Buddy, Susan, remember our backstage voices. Why this is important! It's a red alert! That evil eyeball man is here! Do you want us to go bite him? Crap! Agent Stai! Chip, it's him! Ugh, so rude of him to show up late with both hands full of concessions. Coming through, right behind you, hot buttered popping corn, coming through. 
He's not even saying excuse me. Look, he's just walking right over people's legs. This is what we've been waiting for. It's showtime. Okay, it's already been showtime as we are literally in a play right now, but yes. Guys, did you see? Yes, he's here. Let's queue up scenario sequences 1 through 76 in our minds. In a second, Albert. It's the scene where I challenge Darth Magistrate. Bobby, do you want to run our fight choreography? Bobby Carnuckle is ready. Oh, we hate you have to go. It's time to say bye.